Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to create a 3D cube in JavaScript. There's many easy ways to create a cube using pre-made libraries like 3JS, which are amazing, but I think it's educational to see how to actually create a cube from scratch so that we can go through all the processes of projecting a cube from 3D to 2D and uh, also the way to represent a cube in memory and processing it. So let's get started. Well, let's start as usual and create a, an index.html file to contain our, uh, our little cube. And uh, what I will do is I will create a canvas. So notice that I will not be using any, any JavaScript libraries or even any, uh, any WebGL capabilities. I will just be using 2D uh, plain old uh, canvas functionality. So nothing really fancy in terms of the API. I will just be implementing everything myself. So let's just go ahead and uh, create a kube.js file, which will contain our, our logic there. So um, we will have to initialize the canvas as usual. So it's going to be the canvas tag. And then uh, let's just get the 2D context. So remember, we are in two dimensions. Everything that is 3D is going to be done on the software side, just right here in the code. Okay, so um, how is this cube going to look like? Um, what it's, what it's going to look like is it's going to have the faces of a cube, but on this first video I'm not going to be doing the faces as proper triangles, but instead what I will be doing is I will be drawing them as individual um, points. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little bit like that, and what I will do is I will, I will put random points within the, within the cube like that, and inside the cube as well. Um, this makes it easier because it's, it's easier to draw points than, than triangles. We'll see why in the, in the next video of this series. But um, yeah, that's the plan for now. So let's go ahead and create the geometry of our cube in terms of code. So what I will do is I will have just some vertices or some, some points, let's call it. And um, make a function in a geometry. Um, Let's also create um, keep the variables for um, the size of the canvas, and we've got the inner geometry. And what I will do is I will label my uh, my dimensions. So uh, this is going to be my x dimension here, uh, and then this one's going to be my y dimension over here, and then over here we're going to have my my z direction, right? And uh, this point here. Within the cube is going to be my zero, and then this is going to be plus one over here and minus one over here. So this cube is going to have a side of, of length two. And um, yeah, the, the, the different the, the eight different points are going to have all the combinations of plus one and minus one in the three dimensions. So let's let's just uh, fill the fill the points. So let's go x from uh, minus one up to one, and then let's do small increments, maybe that. And I will do the same in all dimensions, so all, well, all three dimensions. So the x is going to be a y, oops, uh, only on this line, actually. So that's going to be that, and then um, this is going to be this, this uh, x here is going to be a z. And then in my points, I will push a particular point, and a point is just um, an array of three elements, x, y, and z. So that's it. So I've got my geometry, let me just call that function as well. And then I will also need a render function, which will be doing all of the drawing. And I will need to clear rect 0 w h to clean it up. And then I will do a request animation frame to um, have this function called again as soon as the browser is ready to do some more drawing for me. And over here, I will just go through the through the points. So I'll do a for each over here. The function. So let's just use some JavaScript, uh, for some ECMAScript syntax here, ECMAScript six, and ha write the lambda like that with a fat arrow. That's going to be one of the points that's going to have. Um, that's going to have uh, x, y, and z set. So I will just uh, create another function called render point, and that's the parameter. So render point is going to be a function that takes a point and draws it. And in order to do that, I will need a, a model to view 
function which uh, takes coordinates from the model space, which is going to be my well my three dimensional space, and it projects them into two dimensions. So each of the points that I have on this actual cube, um, there may be from you know minus two to plus two. Um, the points are actually confined within minus one plus one, but um, let's leave some space so that we can actually see the cube over here. And the screen is actually much larger in pixels than that. It's maybe 600. So I need to project, um, I need to maybe translate from, or, or not translate, but, but rather, um, yeah, have, have, have some uh, transformation that takes me from the, um, from the model space to the view space. And the other thing that I uh, have to notice here is that each of my points has a Z coordinate that, that I need to, to get rid of somehow so that we remain in screen space because all the things that we can draw with a canvas is just X and Y's basically. So I will call this function project because it takes me from 3D to 2D, it takes a point and returns another point that is a, a 2D point. Okay, so for now let's just uh, take this point and do um, 0 and 1. So this just discards the, the third dimension just discards the third dimension and um, in terms of X and Y I will um, take this one and um, I will create some model max X and a model min X that's gonna be a minus 2 and then that's gonna be a plus 2 um, and so if you take that away and then um, you divide by the uh, max or, uh, model max x minus model min x and then you multiply by w you get this exact transformation that we need and similarly here we need a y okay so this just uh, takes it from um, from a space that goes from min to what to to max from minus 2 to plus 2 and it translates it it's to, into something that goes from 0 to w and similarly for a, for y it goes from 0 to h and because the the coordinates are inversed in in math space as compared to the usual screen space so if you, if you notice in the canvas coordinates in the y direction go like that but in mathematics we have it like this here so we need to also do an inversion um, so just rather um, do this here okay and notice how this is just a percentage of how much room we've covered over the the space from minus two to two? So it's going to be a number from zero up to one, a, a fractional number, right? Um, and so the uh, one minus portion here is just going to be also a number from from zero to one. Uh, okay, that sounds good. And then I can also do a min y and a max y. That sounds good. So in order to render a point, um, I'm going to get the projected point, which is the projected projection of the point. And then I'm going to, to render that particular point by drawing a very little line at that specific, specific location. So just move to the projected point um, 0, which is the x. So let's call it x is projected point 0, and y is going to be projected point 1. And uh, this is going to be x, y, and then I'm going to make a line 2, just one pixel next to it, just so that we can see it for now. And um, yeah, stroke that in maybe a white line. Cool, and um, maybe make the line width uh, a little bit wider than usual so we can see it properly. And um, since it's white, we're gonna need a um, CSS that makes the canvas black by default. So let's call that file style CSS and go ahead and make it black. And uh, maybe let's center it as well. Cool. Um, yeah, that's it. So we need to also call the render function once. Once we do that. And um, let's see if it works. Okay, it's doing some sort of infinite loop. Um, so I'm assuming maybe it's in the in the geometry initialization. So it starts at x there, and then it goes up. Well, let's um, stop this. 
and um, well, let's remove the rendering function and see if it, if it's in, a re in the render or in the init geometry. Okay, it seems to be a problem in the rendering function. So let's see what's in the rendering function. Maybe we're doing something weird there. So I'm doing a for each across all the points. Maybe there's many. Maybe there's just too many points there. Um, so let's just make the step just uh, 0 0.1. Make it a constant so that we can change it more easily in the future. Uh, so that's going to be a constant called uh, step, and it's going to be a 0 0.1, so we got a thousand points there. And maybe it's still a lot. Hmm. Okay, let's make it just 0 0.5 so that we can actually see it. it seems to be stuck there. Alright. Okay, so we got something going on, and uh, you can see you've got, you've got your points. And this goes from um, minus one to to plus one, so it covers a whole distance of, of two by intervals of zero point five. So you can see the five different points that you've got there. And uh, notice that that the cube doesn't have any depth because we just ignore the z coordinate. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is start taking the z coordinate into account in my projection. So um, how do we do that? How do we do that? we take it into into account well first thing um, well this kind of transformation is just taking me from the view space from model space to the view space but it, it's not doing any projection so um, I'll have a separate function called perspective projection of the point which I will call um, uh, perspective point and what this is going to do is it's going to make things that are farther into the distance, it's going to make them smaller, it's going to make them appear closer together. So as z grows, then these points are going to be closer together. And if you think about it, the things that are farther away in your, um, as related to your eyes, they seem closer together. Um, so yeah, this is going to make it look more realistic. Um, so I'm, going to, I'm not going to explain all the math here. But uh, I will give a link in the description below so that you can see how projections work exactly and why they are the way they are. So let's grab the x of the point and grab also the y of the point and the z of the point. And what I'm going to do is I will return x and then I'm going to divide x by z. So you can see that makes it um, that makes things that have a larger z smaller. Okay, so um, let's also add a coordinate of 1 here. So for those of you who have uh, looked at the article I've linked to in the in the video description below, uh, you can see that this is the distance between the um, the camera point and the um, the, um, the projection uh, plane, right? Um, but uh, you can see it intuitively that if you divide by z or a value that is maybe proportional to z somehow, um, it's going to make things with a larger z go smaller, go, go um, closer together. Alright, so we've projected it now, so we can have a new axis here. And a y, as well as a z. Oh, actually it doesn't have a z because it's projected. So now let's call this uh, uh, an x and let's call this a y. Okay, that's cool. So that should work. And now maybe we have something that looks more realistic, a little bit better. Yeah, um, this is still running very intensely. I'm not sure why. Um, so this is the rendering. Uh, okay, so now it's uh, failing actually. Let's see why. Perspective projection. Okay, there we go. So it's um, it's in there, and for some reason I've got x is equal to minus infinity and y is equal to plus infinity, and the reason is maybe I'm not adding too much to z. Um, and notice that z in some cases is minus one. So if I add minus one plus one, that becomes infinite, and then this corresponds to basically being inside the cube uh, in terms of the camera that we're looking from. Uh, so let's make it a little, a little bit larger. Let's move the camera further back, basically. And um, yeah, you've got it. 
here's the here's the cube. So you can imagine that's that's a cube. It's not really moving or zooming anything so far, so you can't really see its third dimension, but it has some sort of perspective, so that's a good start. Well, now that we have the cube here, let's make it rotate so that we can see it um, see it in 3D. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, I think I think we still have too many points because this is kind of um, not working too well. But um, let's make it maybe a little bit less. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm doing some other sort of mistake because it's uh, it's just too slow for this kind of simple kind of drawing. But um, yeah, let's make it back. Put it back, and um, we'll we'll take particular of that later. Uh, all right. So instead of just rendering the point, what I want to do is I want to do a rotate y point. So what this is going to do is it's going to rotate the cube around the y-axis. So uh, assuming the y-axis is going to look like this, my cube is going to it's going to be this one. So what this means is it's going to go around like this. So it's going to go around itself around the y-axis. Cool, and in order to do that, um, let's make it rotating, uh, rotate the point and return a new point. So I'm going to create a function for that, and I'm going to use something called the um, the rotation matrix. Uh, I've also provided a link for that in the description below, so you can look it up and then see the math proof for why it's the way it is. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, write it as it is. So the, the rotation around y, it keeps the y of the point the same because y the y axis is an eigenvector of this uh, transformation, and uh, it transforms the x and the z. So it takes the the cosine here um, of uh, theta, and then times x minus the math sine theta, and then uh, or other yeah, uh, and then here's a zero. Um, sorry, this is a comma here, and then there we go. Okay, and then over here um, we have that this is the math dot sine, and this needs a minus actually over here. And then this needs a times z, and this is going to be times x, and then math dot cos of theta times z. All right, so uh, this is just a matrix multiplication, and uh, this is the new x, the, the uh, rotated x value. Um, Sorry, this needs to be. This this would be the rotation matrix, but actually, uh, after the rotation matrix is applied, um, this is just going to be the values like that directly. So they are going to be added together, right? So so this is the new x value, the x value of the rotated point. This is going to be the new y value, and this is going to be the new z value, right? So you can see that the new x value depends on both x and z. And the new z value depends on both x and z, but the, the new y value is just the same as before. Um, yeah, so um, we can look up the math later. So uh, let's see if this actually works. Let's see if this does something. So this requires a uh, point as well as theta. Let's do that. And uh, we need to extract the x and y and z coordinates. And then put theta here. And I'm going to have just a global variable theta that starts at zero and then moves by delta theta. So I'm just going to denote it like that. And this is the amount of increments that we do on theta. So on every render call, I'm going to take theta and add delta theta to it. Okay, uh, so I'll see if this does anything. Well, it doesn't seem to be doing something. So let's see why this isn't doing something. And it should, it should be rotating things, but the point is uh, not allocated. So it's not a number, and somehow my points are, are broken. So let's see why the initialization code doesn't actually do it. Or maybe it does it. Let's, let's let it finish and inspect it. So this is the end of the initialization code. And if I look at my points, uh, it has an array with 125 points. These, these are not too many, so... This, this should actually not be taking too long to, to render. They are actually all right. They're okay, the points. Um, so maybe the problem is when we, when we try to draw one of these points, 
So you go through these points, and at some point here, the point is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. You attempt to rotate it, and then after the rotation, it fails. It's not something that um, that's a number anymore. Uh, that's because we have the um, we have reversed the the point and the theta. So um, see if this does something. See if it works this time. Okay, so it's doing some sort of some sort of rotation. It's very crude and very slow, but it seems to be doing something. Um, so let's make it go a little bit faster. And um, yeah, you can see it's drawing something and it's leaving some traces. So uh, let me see what, what I'm doing incorrectly here. Let me try with a fill rect actually instead of a clear rect. So let's make fill style black and then fill rect 00, zero wh. And then um, it's still going very slowly. So let me try to debug that. And let's put a breakpoint here and uh, let's see how much time it takes to go from the theta update to the request animation frame. So maybe maybe the problem is in the for each. So yeah, it's taking a bit of time. That's unreasonable for just 125 points. So let's see what's going on inside here. Maybe we can just uh, comment out this kind of this part of the part of the um, part of the render function. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's do a comment out here. And see what happens. Maybe in that case, it's going to be faster if the problem is in the render point function. And uh, yeah, seems like it's not stuck now. So the problem is there. So let's see what we're doing in that function. The single rendering of a point is doing something that's making the browser slow, and uh, it's actually missing a begin path here. So the browser has to actually do some clever guessing and bug fixing for our missing paths there when we do a stroke. Um, so that should actually fix it and make it make it go smoothly. Yeah, so we've got a we've got a cube that's rotating and um, it's going quite fast. Let's make um, delta theta a little bit lower. Let's make it 0 0.03 perhaps and um, maybe a little bit less. Here we go. It looks it looks nice I think. Um, so let's also make it rotate in the x-axis so that we can see it from all of its sides. So the x rotation is going to be identical to the y rotation, except we're going to keep x the same. And uh, we're going to go and change, go ahead and change y and z according to the same formula. Um, here we go, and um, that's the x rotation. So let's call it x and I'm going to go ahead and rotate in both directions. So the updated point is now going to be uh, also rotated by theta, but uh, maybe a small percentage of theta, maybe, um, uh, I don't know, 43 times, 0 0.43 times. So it rotates in different speeds in both, uh, in both directions, and you can see it's going around, it's going around its center. And it looks like a cube, it looks like something crudely 3D, and uh, we haven't really used any of, any, any 3D, functions or anything, just 2D functions. The trick is really the division by Z that we did here. Um, so it's all in the perspective projection that makes it look 3D and basically just this division over here. So yeah, um, I just want to go through a little bit of code here to see what, what's going on. The, the points array is not really changing at all. It's just the original geometry. But I'm looping through this, each point and running this lambda function for it, for each point. And um, one of these points, let's take any one. Uh, what we do is we take the original one and we apply theta rotation, a uh, y rotation by theta to it. And we grab the new point. This, this new point, this rotated point, is never really stored. But what happens is the, the theta value is uh, updated in every um, render call. So each time we rotate the point further. We don't store this rotation at all, we just redo it every time. And uh, after we rotate it around the y-axis by theta, um, we rotate it afterwards around the x-axis by 0.43 times theta, uh, and we get the final point that we're ready to draw, which which gets which render it over there. So um, yeah, before I um, I close this video, I want to show you a little bit of the, um, the math that we use for the projection, because that's the core 
um, part of this, this um, code. So um, the way that this projection works is we imagine that there's some sort of eye here of the user that's looking to the world and, and the world here contains a cube. Right, so the cube contains multiple points and what, what I'm going to describe, we're going to do it for each of these points. So um, let's assume that this is some sort of 3D space. So um, take this as the Z direction and take this as the Y direction and take this as the, um, the X direction. So X is going to be inside, right, like that. And assume we have a point here, which is going to be um, on, the, on the ZY plane. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to have coordinates, um, it's going to have a coordinate of X is equal to zero. And uh, let's connect our eye to it. And let's assume that the Z coordinate of zero is right here. So what we want to do is we, we want to imagine the computer screen sitting here on the position of Z is equal to zero and everything that the eye sees is going to be drawn on this computer screen. So um, let's assume that the eye sits on some sort of distance from the, from the point, say this distance is maybe 4, um, as I did in our case. And um, we, what we want to do is we want to evaluate what is the relationship between this y um, coordinate and um, over here, this y uh, coordinate, y prime, let's call it. Well, what happens is this y prime coordinate of the, of the point over here, let's maybe change the color of it. So let's draw, this point is going to be red. It's going to be on the computer screen. It's going to have a, a z of uh, 0 and also an, an x of 0. And this is going to be a, a point in the world, in the 3D world, in the imaginary 3D world that's stored in RAM. Uh, and the blue point is going to have also an x of 0, but it's going to have a z that's different. And notice how these two triangles that I'm going to draw now, the, the red triangle and the blue triangle, are similar triangles because they, they share an angle like that and they share also another angle the this one over here and this one right so there are similar triangles okay and, and what we can do with these similar triangles is we can figure out what the value of y prime is going to be and if you take a look at that um, you can see that um, we can calculate y prime um, over 4 is equal to, it's going to be equal to y over 4 plus z. And if you, if you move the screen around a little bit or the eye around, you can change this 4 to make this look better or worse, as I did in my example. Um, but overall, you can see that the relationship between y prime and y is just going to be um, y divided by z and maybe in this case, in this example, it's going to be also multiplied by 4 over here and also at the bottom with 4. But um, these numbers, the exact numbers don't really make a difference other than changing the perspective. So you can, you can tweak these to make it look good. But um, the, the core idea is that you know, y is going to be some sort of y and then maybe a constant, 4 in my case, plus z. I, I didn't use these ones. All right, so that's the basic idea. and. Um, if you, if you have a point that has a different blue point, let's say, that uh, sits here in the um, in uh, y is equal to 0, but has uh, an x coordinate that's non-zero, then you can project it similarly um, with, with the same argument. So really the equations for x are going to be exactly the same. So you're going to have this triangle here that sits flat on the, the z x plane, and, and then you're going to have a similar triangle that sits here, um, over there, and then you're going to have this one as the point that you are projecting to, which is the point that you want to find the coordinates of for uh, drawing the point in the screen. So this is the result you get with this kind of um, simple math. And um, yeah, that sums up the basics, the basics of it. This concludes the first video where we made a cube using just points. And in the next section, I will show you how to add proper faces using triangles to the cube.